بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد الأمين نبي الأنبياء وخاتم المرسلين وعلى آله وصحابته والتابعين لهم بإحسان لا مجدين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم من هذا الحديث يلزمنا أن ننتبه له ونفهمه فهما على ما فهمه به العلماء الأقدمون لا ما نقترحه نحن من أنفسنا لأن هذا الحديث خطير جدا على غير العلماء خطير جدا كغيره من الأحاديث ولكن الأحاديث تختلف فإن سفيان بن عيينة وهو موازل للإمام مالك في الاجتهاد وفي زمنه ويقول العلماء حد لنك ويقول العلماء فيه لو لا مالك وابن عيينة لضاع علمه الحجاز معناها ضاع العلم أصلا لأن من باع العلم الحجاز هذه عبارة لضاع العلم أصلا لا يمكن أن نقول لولا أبو حنيفة رحمه الله تعالى وهذا طبعا كابل أو لولا فلان ولولا فلان لا لولا مالك وابن عيانة لضاع علم الحجاز معناها لضاع منبع الوحي فمعناها دعنا من المجتهدين الآخرين حتى نعطيهم منزلتهم فهم سواء ولكن هؤلاء خصهم الله تعالى بعلم الحجاز وهو منبع الوحي فكونهم سواء في الاجتهاد لا يسويهم ذلك في في كون من يرجع اليهم ومن اين اخذوا حمدا نفهمه In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the all merciful, the especially merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. May his peace, blessings, mercy, honor, <coughs> elevation, and protection be upon our master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and his noble family, companions, and followers until the day of judgment. Glory be to you, O Allah, and far from imperfection are you. We have no knowledge except that which you have taught us. Indeed, you are the all-knowing and the all-wise. <coughs> We, before discussing the content of this hadith, it is very important that this hadith is crucial and critical to understand according to the, the way of the scholars and how it was explained throughout Islamic history by the people of true knowledge. Uh, because other than that, it is a source of misguidance except for those people of knowledge. And this was the, in fact, the statement that was and, uh, the, uh, in regard to all of the hadiths by Sufyan uh, Because of the statement of Sufyan ibn Uyayna who said that uh, the uh, hadith are misguided except for the scholars, meaning that some of them especially are a, a source of misguidance and can really mess up somebody's beliefs and practices of Islam if they are not at that level of ishtihad. And who was the one who said this statement? It was uh, Sufyan ibn Uyayna who was a peer of Imam Malik and he was such that, that it was said that if it wasn't for Malik and Ibn Uyayna then knowledge would have been lost from Al hijaz And you have to understand what this statement means at the time of the followers of the followers of the companions. Right at the very first stages of this deen, that they're saying that the knowledge would have disappeared from the place that it was revealed to, if it wasn't for these people. And what is what is he saying? Beware of uh, uh, learn, uh, beware of hadiths, especially some of them. If you are not at the level of explaining them, this is one of those hadiths that is, is super critical. With all due respect to Imam Abu Hanifa being oh, or other than him, <clears throat> and enough to say Imam Abu Hanifa. Uh, that uh, uh, the timing that they came, uh, or despite the great status of him and Imam Shafi'i and Ahmed ibn their critical point of where they were, nobody was at such a critical point. Despite them being at the, the highest and the pinnacle of the, the scholarship, none of them were at that critical point of like being the safeguarders of the and the guardians of. The deen in Al Hijaz, in the, the time of the processors, in the place where the revelation was. was so these are the guardians of the revelation of the Prophet. And what did one of them say? 
hadith is a misguidance except for the scholars. The <laughs> So, and this is very clear today where people are encouraged to go and, and read hadiths and what does this lead to? Quran. Or Quran even according to their understanding. What does this lead to? It leads to people re seeing a piece of a puzzle without the context and what happens as a result? Either one, they, they don't understand it, it uh, they, they don't know how to absorb it and put it in its place and it, it makes them hate Islam and so on and leave Islam. One, uh, uh, also, for some people, they come to a conclusion in their aqidah or their fiqh that is invalidating their very Islam or their prayers or everything. Or for other people, they, they are, uh, you know, coming to conclusions that are, you know, misguiding uh, people and, and making haram halal, halal haram and just mixing up, messing up the whole deen. Other than what? Opening up hadiths. And, and explaining them and under, trying to understand them as if it's the business of an average person to do so. So everybody is given, mashallah. Everybody, everyone on the face of the earth. Walking on his two feet, Muslim, non Muslim. And here's the hadith, collection of hadiths. Understand <clears throat> it however you want to come to whatever conclusion you wish. And your conclusion is valid. You're entitled to your opinion. <clears throat> and then they discuss the hadith. Oh, what do you think about this hadith? <laughs> Oh wow, no, I, yeah, that sounds great. That's a very good explanation. I think you understood very well. That's no, I'll tell all of you, everyone who is present, all of those who are watching, what foolishness is there over this? And this is what has led you to such a animalistic state. You know what has led you, the, the root cause of what has led you to degrading the Prophet and the, the Quran. It is your incorrect, corrupted understanding. You know that every single Muslim American women, woman, women, who follow them from the corrupted countries, uh, the Muslim countries, and the, they're the majority of the those who uh, studied in the universities, and they think that uh, Khadir radiallahu anha is a is a is a businesswoman uh, like like the businesswomen of today, like who? Uh, this is their image of Khadir radiallahu anha, and this is their belief in her, and whoever doesn't believe this, they think that they have uh, degraded women. Is this true? No, it's okay. Is that true? Yes. Yes. This is from your incorrect understanding. Now, so I gave several classes in Sira and people and the purpose uh, of those classes was to show the misperceptions that people have in regard to the seerah. They're imagining something that is not the reality of the seerah. And then, of course, this is going to center on women's issues. That's one of the biggest misperceptions when people read back. Some women are uh, were upset and they say that, you know, this is crying. Sheikh Sadiq is hurting women. 
This is from a lack of understanding. Because people are following some kind of methodology that is not what the scholars established. They want to, their whole effort is to uh, drag the Quran to bring them in line with Western thinking. So if you do not understand the hadith in light of Western thinking and you do not interpret them in a way that justifies and promotes Western thinking and Western thought, then you are an oppressor. Then you're wrong and you're backwards and you're stupid. You, you have no understanding. Right. Not only are you wrong, but you've come up with such a tremendous such a weird uh, uh, mentality that, that that would destroy the heavens. Such an egregious statement as if you're saying that Allah had a son. That uh, such a statement that Allah says about it in the Quran that the uh, that, that the split a, a, a part is nearly a split and the mountains nearly uh, 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 topple over. This is what has led me. Uh, uh, this of, me of, of course, in Deen, there's no. There's no but this, uh, of course, I'll never follow them in Deen and no longer. I'll never agree with them in Deen as long as I'm alive. However, it has led me to such an aversion to their ways that even in just normal everyday life on the personal uh, you know if, uh, regular life things that even and by ijma'a halal or even sometimes the things that are mandub that they've taken to the level of like it's fard that I'll go against those things just because it goes against their, their feelings I'll give you an example. Right, people, they know me in America. In the I'm known uh, in America and around the world to what? To leave the things that people are just, uh, they're habituated to. That they just became uh, comfortable with and those things are the stuff that... Then they, just if somebody goes against them, then this person is crazy. Like, oh, how could somebody ever do that? Um, that, uh, that I'm known to go against those things uh, everywhere that I go. And I have a very important Islamic purpose for why I do that. I've seen people doing haram things and doing kufri things that are just they that have just become so normal and accepted. And there are some things, even some good things, that if you leave it, there's no problem that if you left it. But there is and there's some things that are bad, even just naturally, but they're not bad according to the Sharia. So then uh, those things as well. 
So subhanAllah once I thought to myself, I said this, that people are so far away from the deen. I'll give you an example. A few, a few months ago, uh, I was in my school with about a hundred Living in the middle of the school with a hundred students. More than Oh, okay, 24-7. Yeah. yeah, all the time, living with these people 24-7, more than 100 students. That it is especially uh, recommended in the deen and especially in a civilized place, in a city, that uh, when somebody is teaching the deen, that they are sitting in a place that is distinct from uh, where the students are. And especially that uh, if he is welcoming guests that he doesn't know, that he should welcome them with with a lot of dignity uh, that, uh, to, 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 uh, uh, to honor the knowledge that uh, he's representing. So in the civilization where, uh, you know, Imam Hanifa was in the, the hub of civilization, so everything has its di different sciences, different things have their respect. So he commanded the his students and the students to be um, uh, wear big turbans and wide, uh, you know, clothes and so on. When they teach, so that they give to knowledge uh, 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 some kind of dignity and awe. Because people who are judging it by superficial things, so the knowledge is not degraded, so the knowledge is not uh, humiliated. So and the, the, the reason. It's not so that the person becomes arrogant or thinks he's better <laughs> than and so on, or that in all his gatherings he's, you know, the high and mighty. You know? So that uh, so that people do not degrade knowledge. So that when people see that oh the scholar said this, then that's it. People understand the rank of the scholars. So, it is to elevate and exalt the, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the command of Allah, not the person himself. That's why before the time of the that he had this idea if, uh, that was relevant and important where he was at, but before that, you don't need this at all. Right. And you don't yeah. see them talking about this, discussing this, and doing this. Because the people did value knowledge. So, with the companions, it was different, right? They understood the value of knowledge on its own, but he was in a non-Arab land where they... And there, there's old civilizations, you know, uh, ancient civilizations, a lot of 
uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, culture and so on, and people they respect different things and and and. Uh, and <laughs> for the Arabs and their simplicity, they didn't yes. need this, but for people who. I have to understand that I'm being uh, tested. I'm in the middle of a, a non-Arab land. Right, he told, Imam Abu Hanifa told his top level students, the scholars, to do this. But he didn't tell all the masses to go in and do this. So I was in such a school that I was welcoming these people and so on. And, and my habit was uh, is that I wear simple clothes. And people, they gift me, you know, the nicest of clothes and so on. Super expensive uh, clothes. And I don't prefer it. I wear whatever. And those I don't wear most of the time, especially except for Jum'ah and so on. So then some people came to visit and they were like kings. They had so much wealth. And I was wearing a patched uh, uh, like this from Al Medina, and I was wearing it for Barakah, and I was sitting down. The people said, Oh, the guests are here at the door. So I rushed to them. And I said, Salam to them. And the students were waiting for me. Well, yeah. So then, then we had uh, the, those guests come and sit down, and we put the mats for them and everything. And, then, and we had a slaughter, or whatever, a sheep or whatever for this for the guests. And, and my brother came from the from the market and he was very embarrassed. He had a very expensive, uh, 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 you know, clothes on. Because he's a, a merchant, you know, he mixes with the people and he sells with the people. And right, and th that's how you do business. But he's in reality more simple than me. So then he took off his thing and he said, Let's switch clothes. And he said, Why are you meeting the people with these clothes? And then ask him in Mauritania. So the, so the people were from, the people were uh, from Mauritania, so then their image was, who were the guests. So then their image of America, and they're expecting this, uh, this teacher who's from America and so on to be in these fancy clothes and whatever. So I wanted to break their perception. Uh, by wearing the simple clothes and so on and just like <laughs> so they don't think that they don't their glorification of America gets like, reduced or removed <laughs> and each one of them dreams of going to America anyways so they came to me and they, I never met them before and what they were encountered with was I was wearing some fancy western clothes and I had a special car waiting by the door and had my special guest room uh, a special you know, guest room aside from the 
you know, and a, a special living room for the guests aside from where the and the special, you know, seating place for the students and so on. Then they'll, think, then they're coming to, they'll think they're coming to some, you know, it's the, uh, 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 American organization, you know, it's not. Uh, so I understand their mentality, so I'm intentionally countering you. Because, uh, so what has led me to leave, why should you leave something that is recommended in the deen if you have something better and then once I leave it then it, and I know if I don't do those things then I'll be going against my people's culture. And there's no hardship if I did that, and, and it would be according to the Sharia, and I would be. It wouldn't be at, at the very least not against the deen, and so on. But I'm choosing to leave something that is recommended or permissible for something that is more important. So I'm trying to intentionally make them uncomfortable with certain things that I do, just to, you know, get them to rethink. That you know the, uh, these um, uh, things that we used to go against their 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 norms in the just basically like just dress and walking and basic like normal things. Uh, just to because literally they have honored those things they, those things are so important to them that they fixate on them more than the five daily prayers so this is a, a, you know, a psychological problem this is called a psychological disease this is called a psychological disease Right, this is and when we look at the non-Arab companions who entered into Islam, they left behind everything they were used to. Everything they were used to. Everything they were used to on a daily basis, even the things that are permissible and fine, and they left their preferences to the preferences of the Prophet. That they left behind their preferences for all that for everything the Prophet did. And they would even ask, what did the Prophet eat? Look at the book of Shemayi the foods Al from uh, Shemayi al Tirmidhi. Mm -hmm. They just even were asking about the normal clothes that he wore. When did he sleep? When did he wake up? When did he uh, go out to, to the people? How did he deal with the people? So they even left behind their daily habits and their schedules. And what led them to do that was the, the, their love for the Prophet ﷺ and seeking to follow him even in irregular matters. And all of this is detailed. So what we So what people are doing today unfortunately is they are innovating things in the sharia ah and twisting the sharia ah to make the sharia ah fit their daily habits and their their the, what they're used to and what they like. <laughs> so that they make those uh, innovations uh, things that are uh, that they are preferring and beautifying. <laughs> I'll give you some examples. So 
وبعد ذلك عندما نرى فإذا هو إذا لم يحلق اللحية فقريب من حلقها قريب من حلقها لكن لو وجد بدون عمامة لكان هذا مهلكته هذا يشار إليه بالأصابع فلان يدرس بدون عمامة ولكن كل يدرس بدون لحية ويدرس بدون يعني يعني أو قليل من حقها لا بس ولكن إذا كشف صدره في الدرس أو كشف على رأسه هذه أورة امرأة ما بين صورتها بدون مبالغة هذا حقيقة ترجمة صحيح نعم so I'll give you an example in America when you say أو المشرق the نعم أو ميدل إيست or in the Middle East when you say a scholar أو الكثير من الناس العالم right a scholar أو مدرس وهو ليس بعالم أصلا Right or even a teacher, and he's not even a, a, a alim to begin with. But when they say that a alim is coming and this a great scholar and so on, right? What so, you, so you, 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 right? Everybody is going to come with their imamas, and of course, the one who's expected to be in his imama is the, mashallah, this great scholar who's coming. Imagine if this scholar takes off his imama, or if people see his his head. He's not wearing anything. Head, head. Or even worse, that his, 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 his chest is showing. This would be such a disgrace that this is as if a woman not only is showing her awrah and her arms as they do in, in every class, uh, but that she is as if she's showing between her, her uh, navel and her knees. Just a and they'll excuse the saying that even though it's permissible, they will excuse it saying that this is disgracing knowledge. And when, mashallah, the person, if he has no character and no manners except for that, that's fine. That you see, mashallah, his plate is loaded just like the kids who are going and loading up their plates. And he's eating, subhanAllah, like a cow or like, like, like a Trump or Obama. وإذا لم يأكل بملعقة وبأشياء أسلوب غربي هذا يقل إذهال الاتيب. And it's going to be a disgrace to him and it's going to reduce his status if he's eating with his hands and not with a spoon. وإذا لم يأكل بصحن وحده فيقال أنت لا تحتني من الإسلام. لا تحتني من الإسلام. هذا من البدع المستحسنة. يا لم تأكل ب ب ب ب بصحن وحده قد تؤدي ضرر الآخرين مرض وأيضا مستقبل لأن هذا تأتي أيد وتأتي يد أخرى هذا ليس بجيد كل في صحة واحدة حتى تحتني الإسلام حتى يأمر الناس بالإسلام جيد. So people treat this as a this is an innovation that is accepted that everybody should have their own plate because it's more sanitary you know and you're putting your hand in something. تلو الله الإسلام بعين الرضاعة. And the bacteria and you're going to get people sick and look you have to make a good image for Islam and otherwise you're making. حتى يرى كل على حيدته يعني كل. You have to show that Muslims are civilized. كل واحد هناك. And everybody is separated, the, and, and everybody has their own place, even a man and his own family. So that when we upload the pictures of this event, the people can look at us like we're civilized and not like we're uncivilized. Now. هذه هي ستكون هذا من باب احترام الإسلام أو من باب إدخال الإسلام ما يحييه وما ينشره. and this is called mashallah part of the you know reform of Islam. حتى تعطي الإسلام عز. modern Islam and honorable Islam and so on. هذه الفكرة. هذه بدع مستحسنة وأيضا يدل عليها الشارع ويدل عليها الطابع ومن عرف قوم فخلينا نمشي فيها. so then people are like these are you know you know these are good bid'as. Uh, and these are, you know, that are permissible in Islam, and they, in fact, are based on things, and, and they're, they're based on things that are recommended in Islam, and when we look at uh, these things in Islam, then they will find, you know, whatever uh, 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 proofs fabricated or otherwise that, that will approve what they're, what they're trying to say. لكن إذا نظرنا إلى الحقائق ورجعنا إلى الحقائق على سبيل المثال نحن سنكون واقعيين لأن هذا مهم نحن كم ابتدعنا في الإسلام أشياء تعارض الإسلام نحن الآن عندنا بدع من أحدث في أمرنا الحديث نصه 
من احدث في امرنا هذا ما ليس منه وهو رد عليه وفي وفي روايه لمسلم من عمل عملا ليس عليه عملنا امرنا من من عمل عملا ليس عليه امرنا فهو رد كل الروايتين هذه هذا حديث موجود جدا سنبين منه خطوره اجتهادنا الان وطرحنا للامور في غير موضع So this hadith, which the text of it is narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha, that uh, that uh, whoever, whoever innovates in this matter of ours, in the deen, anything that is not from within it, then it is rejected. And the other narration is whoever does any action uh, 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 that our matter is not upon, uh, then it is rejected. So how is this hadith understood and what is the real meaning of this hadith? هذا يحتاج إلى تقعيد من العلماء إلى حد من العلماء والتبيين لأن الأمور قد مضت ففينها ما ما ألغي ومنها ما قبل ومنها ما تكلم العلماء لأن البدعة على خمسة أقسام. So then we have to understand how scholars have explained what bid'ah is. How have they detailed the different categories of bid'ah and where the innovation is? And the most common, uh, uh, you could say, explanation is that bid'ah is made into five parts. There's five types of bid'ah. So then you see how people take this hadith today. If they will take things that are part of the deen as bid'ah and they will take things that are not a part of the deen as part of the deen and come up with bid'ahs based on this hadith which they misunderstood. So innovating certain matters in deen um, uh, and then also uh, That, that are that are clearly you know wrong in the in the deen <laughs> as we give have given the examples and they will also be um, uh, saying that certain things are a part of they will also be saying that certain things that which are a part of the deen are actually wrong <laughs> they said So the scholars explain that there are some bid'ahs that are that are wajib, that are agreed upon wajib. Give me, uh, for example, the, 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 that the scholar that the companions passed away, all passed away before the hadiths were gathered into volume. All of them passed away. وكثير من الصحابة بل غالبهم ماتوا قبل أن يجمع القرآن في مصحف واحد. many of the قد يقال كثيرهم. or you could even say most of them. لأن الجمع كان بخلافة عثمان رضي الله تعالى. passed away before the Quran was fully authenticated. the copies of the Quran were fully authenticated and gathered into one authenticated book. So there was even a disagreement in the beginning between the companions. Should we gather it? Should we not gather it? So in the beginning they had this surface level disagreement, but then when they, uh, because they said that the Prophet ﷺ left this world and he did not uh, gather all the Qur'an into one, and the Abu Bakr and Umar, same thing. So then uh, we don't want to innovate something. So then, but then they looked at it, they said that, okay, no, this bid'ah is actually There's no other option. And this also happened with Umar radiallahu anh, gathering people with gathering people for Taraweeh. When he saw the Masjid al-Nabawi, filled with people that are scattered, everybody reading as much as they're able.
وجد الناس كلهم كلهم يعارضوا القران، واذا قرأ القران فاستمعوا له وانصتوا، كل واحد منهم كان يسمع الاخر، يعني هذا مو صحيح. Everyone can read the, hear the next person and everyone's reading over the next person. هذا صار تخليط وتشويش على الامه وكلهم لا يستمع الى القران. And Allah سبحانه وتعالى is saying that if the Quran is recited then listen to it and be silent so that you may receive his mercy. But everybody's, you know, interrupting each other. And كل يعارض الآخر لا 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 يقبل ويستمع إلى الآخر كل يعارض الآخر وكل يضر الآخر لا ضرر ولا ضرر يخلط على الآخر. Everybody's trying to read loud enough so that they can hear themselves and understand and not hear the next person. And then this also is causing harm to the next person because. والحديث الصحيح لا ضرر ولا ضرر. And the authentic hadith, right? No harming and no right bringing about of harm. فجمع الناس على أبي موسى. So then he gathered all the people to pray behind Ubay ibn Ka'b and he said that's it. No more various people praying, that's it. No more imams or three or four. No, it's Ubay ibn Ka'b. Leading everybody. وبعد ذلك بيوم من اليوم جاء ومر بالناس فإياهما بعد ذلك بيوم ومر بهم فإذا هما يستمعون كلا وأبي بن كعب رضي الله تعالى عنه يقرأ به يقرأ أمامهم القرآن. And then he passed by the next night and he saw them سبحان الله all of them standing at attention praying behind Ubay ibn Ka'b while he recites the Quran. قال وبنفسي حبيب بخاري. And he said himself what a great bid'ah this is. فمن كذلك أيضا وقع له في جمع القرآن فقال فلو لم يجمعه نحن ما بنا الآن حافظ الإسلام أصلا إلا قليلا. That even عثمان رضي الله عنه he he you know he had was at the same crossroads himself. He was at the same crossroads himself when he was gathering the Quran when the memorizers of the Quran began to pass away and of course he was one of them. وكان يقرا القران في ركعه واحده عثمان واحده. He used to recite the Quran in one raka'ah. He had the Quran perfectly memorized, could have compiled it himself. ولكن لو لم يجمعه يكون بلي علينا نحن نحن ما بنا صبي ولا شاب ولا كبير يحفظ القران. But then if he had not authenticated the copy and brought different people and so on and 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 cast it down where it would not be doubted at all any single letter of it, then then subhanallah we would be in a bad situation right now. ما بنا واحد يقرا الفاتحه. Unfortunately, the vast majority of people not even being able to recite Surah Al-Fatiha in the One of our one of our haram bid'ahs today is to just push everyone. It doesn't matter. تزيد الناس في أولا تزيدهم. تزيدهم 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 نعم كيف ويقولون لماذا هم يعني يأخذوا كل هذا الوقت في السورة فقط لم يقرأوا تزيد الناس في الحفظ والنقل تزيد الناس Proper memorization. People are being taught that memorization is not really important, you know? It's okay if That people feel absolutely needless to memorize anything, even things in the Quran. And even if they're memorizing, they're just told, you know, to just pass, memorize it, read it once. That's it. And you're considered memorizing it. Good job, you pass. That uh, as a result of this... That... تزيدوا الناس الحفظ حتى لا يوجد بالأمة الإسلامية لا حافظ إلا قليلا بمعنى حافظ يقرأ كتاب الله لا يحتاج إلى مصحف أصلا. As a result of this, there is a uh, very uh, you rarely find true hafiz people who are. Uh, لا يحتاج لو حرقت المصاح في الليلة أو لم يكن في بيته مصحف لا يمكن أن يتعمد ويقوم يقرأ القرآن من نفسه. 
that are uh, that have memorized the Quran so well that they can go up and read the Quran without needing a mushaf. Unfortunately, the people who need uh, who are hafiz tell them to go or recite the whole Quran uh, on, uh, on their own oh, or tell them to read 20 juzes or 10 juzes oh, or, or 5 or 3 without needing a mushaf. They will say, you know, I need my mushaf everywhere that I go. I'm a hafiz, but I need my phone to track me wherever I go. This is from the forbidden bid'ahs. That, uh, uh, it said uh, that uh, narrated that from the uh, special uh, characteristics of this ummah is that their books are in their their book is in their chest. Mm. Go back a hundred years, you won't even find a child who is told, who is called a uh, hafiz who, who needs a mushaf. Rather, in our whole entire neighborhood, all of our. our, our I lived, there, was, there was maybe one family that had a mushaf. Everybody else that memorized the Quran, they don't need a Muslim. There are people teaching the Quran, passing down the Quran, you know, no Muslim at all. I reached maybe uh, 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 right, 13 or 15 years and I never touched a Muslim. Right, I, because I didn't need a mushaf, and the people next to me, they didn't. كلهم مصاحب. They're all مصاحب. ليش؟ لأن هذه نحن الآن نزهد الناس يقول لا تفكر أهم شيء دراسة الدين دراسة الدين وفهم الدين أهم شيء نمر على هذه القراءات ونأخذ يعني التجويد من شخص وريلاية وهافون هذا ونحن عندنا مصاحب وخلاص الأمر يعني سهل. أهم. نعم فعلا الشيء الوحيد الذين الذي يحضون على وما يحضون عليه يحضون على الكذب نعم هو الكذب فعلا ولكن الناس يقولون ان الشيء الوحيد تدخل في اي مسجد هذا كذب هذا كذب هذا هو هذا الزور هذا نوع من التزييد قل لهم انا قلت هذا كذب وانت تعلم people might be سيقولون قل I'm sure people I'm sure people will say the only thing you see being taught in messages is Quran the only thing kids are being taught, taught nothing they're being taught Quran and this is subhanallah because they're not memorizing the Quran truly right they're, they're being uh, this is a great deception. better for me is the others who they're not uh, they're not memorizing but they're not lying and claiming that they're memorizing مركبون. instead of being just ignorant those are people who are fools who are compounded fools and ignorant people compounded liars لماذا ينتقلون إلى حظ الناس إلى تحفظ القرآن لعام الناس حفظ المكذوب ويتركون حظ الناس على حفظ فرائض عينهم اليومية هذا انتقال من بدعة محرمة إلى بدعة محرمة So what, what are they doing? This is a bid'ah that they're telling people go and memorize the Quran and they're not even memorizing the Quran that on its own is حفظ القرآن فرض كفاء Memorizing the Quran is not an uh, individual. Other than the Fatiha is a full kifaya, it's not an individual obligation. Um, so that's uh, first of all that uh, even their memorization is a lie, and then another bid'ah on top of it is preferring the memorization of Quran over the memorization of uh, of fardain. So then on top of that is the bid'ah that people are being told don't even memorize your fardain and that's not even a thing that's known. It's go and attend lectures and learn about the deen and go deep into studying hadiths and 
everything and, and people don't have knowledge of the Quran or their Fawlain or anything. هذه البدع ما كانت في السلف الصالح ولا من بعده ولا من في السنة المطلقة لا يمكن تجد عصرا من العصور يزهد في حفظ الدين أصلا. So these are agreed upon. خصوصا فروض العين لا تجد أحد من المسلمين يقبل هذا عقلا ولا نقلا. لا أحد من المسلمين. These are agreed upon norms that it's good. Wow, this person is going to such and such عالم course and such and such learning of of these books and what not in advanced. أو مسلم طيب يمارس فرائضه اليومية. أو مسلم طيب. Or that, mashallah, look at this religious Muslim, he's practicing his deen, he's always at the masjid and so on, but none of them did even their basics. This is a huge bid'ah that you would never see. Look from when the Prophet ﷺ was sent all the way up to 100 years ago and you will not find this. Not that it's accepted like it is today in the norm and the only thing people know. But it wasn't even imagined that this could be the state. So when did this, what opened the door for this to, uh, to happen was the opening of the, uh, the academic Islamic. institutions, Islamic academic institutions that are uh, made, uh, that they teach things in the, uh, the Western methodology of degrees and so on. Giving people papers saying they have knowledge instead of giving them the actual knowledge. This was another innovation that led to how much haram. First of all, it is uh, 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 forbidding that which uh, Allah commanded. For, uh, stopping people from that which Allah commanded. Second of all, it led people to thinking that and believing even and lying to themselves the lie that what? That they understand certain branches of knowledge when they didn't understand really anything. How many in this gathering even before we even talk about anybody else, how many people in this gathering think that they know their basics? And if you ask this person, they will say, yes, of course, I'm kind of Or Maliki, and, and, and I have no doubt I know my, my Farbain. And they'll even say that now, mashallah, I'm at the level where I'm studying Khalid. Or I'm studying something from a different madhab. Right, my fardain from my own madhab is done, I'm studying a different madhab. That's right. Yeah. But if you ask him about the light and the light and if we, but if we tell this Hanafi, tell us the page one from page two of, of Nur al-Idhar. What, what is written there? What's written in page one, what's written in page two? Tell us what's the difference. And what's the difference between page 70 and page one? I have to think. <laughs> And get a headache that he never has. This is a very dangerous headache. This is a headache that's not going to be a headache. You have to give him some time to go get his notebook and go uh, open his computer, and if his computer breaks, then that's it. His did I study this with this person or with that person? Oh, I forgot. You never memorize so that you can call it forgetting. You didn't forget it. You didn't memorize it to begin with. So that word I forgot is a lie. You didn't memorize so that you can forget. 
What forbidden bid'ahs are there? Everyone answer me. This is, uh, 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 this is uh, losing our deen and Allah forbade us from losing our deen. Or even forget about teaching this to your wife or to your sister or to your daughter. Or to your friend, that's a different matter. Right, you know your fard ayn, but your friend cannot benefit from it. You don't know where to give him from, and you don't know, because uh, uh, you don't even speak Arabic in the first place. So if we tell you, okay, here's the book for your madhab, you don't even know where the, what you're looking for is. You have to now rely on a translation or a notebook or a computer. Right, a, a translation that your teacher trans, translated for. So you're translating from a translator. These are all forbidden bid'ahs. So then you in the gathering, even the translator thinking that, oh, this is a... This is a new thought. This in itself is a good thing. He's doing exactly what he said, don't do, which is to innovate things. From things that are not from within the deen. No. No. لا 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 so subhanAllah, then when I uh, teach the students and <laughs> I tell them memorize and memorize and then they want to memorize Risala or Khalil. And that you want to study, do again, want to study Khalil or Risala, memorize is beyond them. And then I tell them what did you do with the, 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 the basics of the deen. What did you do with Nur al-Idhar? Nur al-Idhar is not the same, but it's done. We studied it before and it's done. They think that we just, we heard it explained once or twice. Passing through it, this is memorized, we studied it. And, and we understood it, no we need to memorize it. So passing through it, this is... That means we understood. We studied, we understood. We applied and it's still with us. This is what people think. If we passed through it, we understood it, and we applied it, and that's it. We can move on. These are five lines. Prophet said, whoever lies about me intentionally, let him await his place in the fire. How can you claim that you know this and what not? These are hadith and verses. You're saying you know the, the meaning then and application of the deen of Allah SWT, the words of the Prophet SWT in your life. This is exactly the, what the Prophet ﷺ said, that whoever innovates in this matter, that which is not from it, it is rejected. This is the way of the Prophet ﷺ. Um, uh, uh, teaching uh, the knowledge. Teaching his 
companions in that proper methodology when they memorized, they learned, and then they taught the next generation and they taught the next generation. And that is their sunnah, and that is the way they practice their deen, and that's what they died upon. I even went to some neighborhoods in Mauritania where there's just some uh, villages that there's no, um, there's no, there's, they don't have anybody who, uh, who has a Mukhtas al Khalil. But they teach it. And many of the families don't have that poem of Al-Akhdari or the book of Al-Akhdari. But they all know it. And they teach it and memorize it. This is the generation that the Prophet ﷺ and his companions, you know, uh, 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 you know, generation after generation, this is the way that they t that they taught. And this is why Subhanallah Abu Huraira said, I divided my night into three parts. Or Anas ibn Malik. One of those who memorized the hadith uh, uh, and, and passed down the hadith. Uh, one of the prolific narrators of hadith. How did he divide his night? He does not write down the hadith or the Quran. He doesn't have a paper to write in anything. Or any paper at all. Or a pen. Right? You don't see the companions with papers and pens writing. So he said, I spent one third of the night sleeping. And one third for the recitation of Quran, meaning including prayer and, and, and reciting for worship. Memorize or not memorize? Of course. And, I, and, and, and he reads it and, and prays with it. He doesn't have a paper or a pen or a tablet or a computer. Or a paper even. No pen ever entered his house either. He said in one third of his reviewing the sunnah that I learned from the Prophet that he reviews for one third of the night the Prophet whoever narrates in this or whoever innovates in this matter of ours that just repeating it repeating it repeating it keep it memorized it and many other hadiths so what was the result of this how many students and how many students and memorized from him they would sit next to him with no paper or pen just hearing from him repeating memorizing and then after that the, the generations pass it down starting with the followers of the followers of the companions ومن شدتي لما وجدت الكتابة صاروا من شدة مراقبتهم على الحفظ حتى لا تفوتهم كلمة ليكتبوها فيحفظوها عندما ينكسر قلم الرجل في وسطه يقول من يبيع قلم بدينا هذا ثمن مستحيل كان تعطي فيه ألف دولار من شدة مراقبتهم على الحفظ حتى لا تفوتهم كلمة مما قالها راو their extreme care of, of uh, you know not uh... Uh, uh, from their attention when they started to write and they upped their, their, their like input then one of them his pencil would break or his pen would break in the middle of a class and he would say who would sell me a, a pen for a gold coin write a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars just a pen and the people who are selling pens are there waiting. Right, somebody sends him a, 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 like a reed pen or whatever. And a stick, basically. 
خذ دينار Here's your. I don't have time. Here's your gold. Here's my my pen. This is the result of the fight on the hill. When the Bukhari came out, what did he do? And there are many others who are more powerful than the Bukhari. He is a Sabuli. He is more powerful than the Bukhari. He is a Sabuli. He is more powerful than the Bukhari. He is a Sabuli. And this is the followers of the followers of the companions. وهناك حفاظ أحفظ من البخاري كان يسابوري الفارس من كان البخاري لا يحفظ عليه شيء حتى يسابوري يحفظ من البخاري بكثير هناك حفاظ أحفظ من البخاري. And there were people who memorized more than Bukhari. أقوى حافظ من البخاري بكثير. Stronger memorizers than Bukhari by a lot. مثال من النسابوري. Like a نسابوري. كان يقول لمن كتب كتابا في الحديث قرأه عليه وخلاص هذا. حتى ليس فقط أنت كتبت لنا كتاب جديد أقرأه عليك. That whoever would write a new book of hadith, he would say, okay, read it to me, read it on me. That means that he knows already that every hadith that's in it. وهذا فارسي. And he's Persian. He's like, if you lose this book, I already memorized everything. عندي ضمانة ما دمت حيا خلاص انتهى. As long as I'm alive, that's it. It's already safe. عندك أنت ماذا لو ضاعت المطر لا يمحوه والرياح لا خلاص انتهى. لا الحريق لا يدخله. جاء البخاري من شدة حبه البخاري جاء إلى العراق للامتحان. So Al Bukhari was in Iraq and he was being tested. والناس سمعوا بحفظه وهناك نوع من الحاسدين أكثر من من النعصاء وهناك نوع من الممتحنين أكثر من النعصاء. ناس نيتهم طيبة وناس نيتهم سيئة. So there was people who were envious more than can be counted, and there were people who were testing him more than the. حتى يخرج المسلمين حافظ من البخاري. And of course, the testing is necessary. So people would uh, fabricate something or add a word here, remove a word, change the narration, remove one of the narrators, just mess with a small detail to see if he catches it, to see if truly the hadith is authentic. This is being done to all of those people who are claiming the good knowledge uh, so that they can find who the true Imam Bukhari is, who he turned out to be. Right, for Bukhari to be Bukhari. Everyone knows Bukhari in the whole world. So they gathered 100 hadiths. And every one of the people, uh, those 10 people, they, they, they said they're going to test him. And each uh, one said they're going to take 10 hadiths and they're going to mess with the detail of it. قلب أحدك أعطاه أحد المكتوبة كلها. or swap out. قلب أحد أعطاه أعطاه سند غير السند التي هي مسلوبة كلها. سند آخر. غير سندها كلها. or they they changed their the 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 chains of their narrators of the hadiths. the hadith is the same but then the from this person from this person but the chains مختلف. ما قد سمعه البخاري من قبل ما قد مر على وجهه. So Bukhari never heard those chains before. One hundred hadiths and their chains. There. أمامك يا بخاري هذه مئة حديث بسالها. أنا أقول عن فلان عن فلان عن فلان عشرة حديث. سمعت يا بخاري. هو البخاري جالس. So Bukhari he listened to all of them. لما تهت مئة حديث مقلوبة الأسانيد. Once they finished with their one hundred hadiths with the wrong chains. فقال أما أنت فقلت عن فلان عن فلان عن فلان إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وسندك كذب وهو عن فلان عن فلان عن فلان إلى رسول الله. so he corrected them all in a row. كل ما قال هكذا. he said that each one of them he said you said. عن فلان عن فلان عن فلان. the chains that you said. And you lied. ما ما فقد واحد مما كذبوا. Here are the so he mentioned the fabricated chains. He memorized on the spot the fabricated chains and then told them the and which chains were said by which person. And then he gave them the correct chains. هلا أما هلا كذب قال ولكن سند إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كذب. أنت قلت هذا ولكن هذا كذب. Oh, but you said this and this is not true. ولكن السند الصحيح عن فلان عن فلان إلى رسول الله تهمنا. This is the real. هاي العشرة انتهى. بسم الله. So then next person, next person, next person, next person, all at once. لما أنا رأيت قال هذا هو الشيء. So then they understood that he truly memorized. ماذا قالوا؟ Memorization. What did they say? قالوا شعرا المسلمون بخير ما بقيت بهم 
That they said the Muslims are in a state of goodness so long as you are uh, amongst them and once uh, and there is no more goodness once you leave. So people are now doing what? They're doing the opposite. Running away from the stories and they narrate them, they tell them to people and then they tell people don't no need to memorize. Right, that was Bukhari, but now mashallah we have easily indexed and searched searchable you know databases for knowledge and whatnot and we have all of it. There's no need for us to memorize like that anymore. Why don't you be honest and say that we need knowledge like that more nowadays? How many Hafiz? Tirmidhi is a teacher of Al Bukhari. Then at their time, that how many scholars and how many, how many, how many people who uh, hafiz existed who memorized all those hadiths as well, like him. We have alternatives and we have people to take his place. But right now we destroy our deen for what? So we can be. 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 ولكن يقبض العلم بقبض العلماء ولكن إذا لم يبقى عالما اتخذ الناس رؤساء جهال السور ويرتبون إذا تتحقق هاي البدعة المحرمة إذا تتحقق هاي البدعة المحرمة هذه البدعة المحرمة بدعة will take place so that what that we were warned about will take place that the Prophet ﷺ said that indeed Allah does not take away knowledge by snatching it from the hearts of his servants, but he takes it away by the passing away of the scholars until when no scholars remain, people take as their leaders ignorant heads and they will give, be asked and they will give their opinions without knowledge of misguiding themselves and others. <laughs> And lie to themselves more than spending months and months attending classes and then not memorizing and not caring to review and bother to memorize anything and then thinking at the end of that that they gained uh, uh, that they believe certainly that that was enough for them to just sit there and that they will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this and will save them and they have done what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded them and stayed away from their progress and that is the best of our generation so this is not only innovations this is Combating the deen. 
Allah Ta'ala قال لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون ما حاد الله ورسوله Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says that you will not find the people who believe in Allah the last day opposing uh, Allah and his messenger but this is subhanallah this is opposing Allah يحدون الله ورسوله من يمكن ان يحد الله اخبرونا tell me who can oppose Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala لكن دين هذا هو دينه في الارض والسماء الاسلام يحاد but this deen of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala people are opposing it night and day يخرجونه من عقول المسلمين But they're removing it from the minds and the memories of them. With these uh, uh, very, uh, you know, twisted, uh, planned and plotted devious methodologies that the, that the leaders of the disbelievers and the corrupt devils and the enemies of Allah and His Messenger have, have, have detailed and elaborated. From a long time ago, over a hundred years ago, they've been they've been uh, they've been implementing their plan to erase Islam and to change how it's practiced and learned and memorized. But even when a Safullah, a Kafir person, has a problem with something in Islam, that the that if you read even the most basic books, that it's there, you see that it's like the end of the world. Some non-Muslim tells you, oh, but this is in your, you know, oh, maybe you know, and try to provide an explanation and a way out. Give me some time, you know, I'll give you an answer. Maybe there's a difference of opinion, you know. Maybe it was fit for that time and not this time. I have to see what the scholar said about it. Who are the scholars? Oh, the, the Northern California scholars. هذه هي البدعة أنا لا أريد أن أقول لكم بدعة المولد ولا أقول لكم أن أريد لكم بدعة الكتابة ولا أريد أن أقول لكم بدعة يعني اجتماع ذكر هذا الشيء انتهوا منه العلماء أنا أريد أن أضيع لكم الوقت أقول لكم بدعة المولد هذا ستوب Right, why would we discuss the motive? The motive is something the scholars have already discussed. It was the matter that was discussed and approved in by Suyuti and, and Ibn Hajar. The scholars have mentioned this. Uh, what about the... ما هو الحال نعيش نحن الآن؟ Whatever scholars said about, said about different types of dhikr and so on. ما هو اجتماع الذكر هل هو بدعة أو مستحسن أو غير مستحسن؟ What are the different opinions on that? هذا الشيء أنتهي من هذا ليس ليس أمر مهم هذا. Don't worry about that. That's the that's a non-issue. افتح أي كتاب تجده به. افتح أي كتاب. Already discussed. Open any book you'll find. أنت تدعي العلم كيف تتجهل هذا؟ هذا موجود. You're claiming to have knowledge. Well, the knowledge is there. It's, the, the discussion of these matters is known. This is filled, mashallah, the four corners of the earth. But. So I'm giving you examples from bid'ahs we are actually experiencing. That our bid'ahs is that we are uh, uh, treating certain habits as if they are fard, things that are not even not even recommended. That whoever is not doing these things, they're ridiculed in the Muslim. That they are looked at, looked out, at and ridiculed. من فعل جميع المنهيات ولو أدى إلى الكفر. من فعل جميع المنهيات بجميعها. And whoever does all the types of things that are haram. بجميع أنواعه ولو أدى إلى الخروج من الكفر. ما دام لم يخرج عن المعتاد اليومي هذا محمود. If doing every type of haram doesn't matter. ما دام لم يخرج عن المعروفات. As long as he's whatever of the haram things they're doing are just widespread. Spread and everybody's doing them and nobody cares. And not a big deal. As long as it's not something unusual or un something that people don't do, then it's totally fine. 
We'll find some kind of bid'ah to justify what he did. This is the problem of placing things where they do not belong. Clear lies about the Prophet. So we can make all of ourselves under that statement of the Prophet وسلم, whoever lies about me intentionally let him await his place in the fire. How many things do we have bid'ahs that we do on a daily basis and we think that they're part of the deen and they're haram um, Everything that we do, right, we're just concerned about the feelings of people, how people are going to view this or not. Is it going to make people feel bad or feel good? That's it. Did Allah forbid you to consider people's feelings when it comes down to matters of what right and wrong? Or did he command you to do that? You tell me. Did Allah command us to just go whatever is pleasing to the people? Tell me about a single verse that commands this. Especially if your feelings uh, are going against the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know that you think about this every day. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade you from. Allah ta'ala qala, basda' bima tu'maru, amran li nabiyyina sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أصدع بما تؤمر وأعرض عن المشركين أعرض عن ما يخالف شرع الله لا تفكر عن خواطر الناس. الله سبحانه وتعالى قال أصدع بين ما ما تؤمر. أفلاق به أصدع به أكسر حتى يكون نور أفلاق به يعني أصدع بما تؤمر. That clearly declare pronounce that which you have. وأعرض عن ما يقول الناس. And turn away from the polytheists. What do people say? It doesn't matter what they say. If they don't like it, you have to declare it. As long as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has not made for you some leniency in that matter, then that's it. Whether people like or not like, that's it. Allah and His Messenger are more befitting that they please Him if they were truly believers. لأنهم لا يفكرون عن خواطر أبنائهم ولا زوجاتهم ولا أباهم هذا أهم شيء عندما يأتي أمر الله تعالى خلاص أنا ما عندي خيار نهائيا هذا أمر من الله تعالى هم لا يفكرون عن خاطر لأن الله ورسوله حقا يرضون كانوا مؤمنين so Allah and his messenger هذا صاحبه لا يفكر عن خواطر ما دام يعارض الشرع لا the the one who is declaring the deen and passing down the deen and 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 uh, and representing the deen, it doesn't matter whether it's his mother or father or a husband or wife or whoever. That's it. That's it. It doesn't matter what they're feel, how they feel about it. Whether they like it or not. That's it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even says that if your parents are right now, that, that if they um, uh, struggle against you to make you uh, um, uh, and to worship uh, Allah, then do not obey them. But still accompanying them. So accompany them in the best uh, uh, manner, but do not 
Don't worry about their feelings in, in That's it. In that command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't matter. You're believing in Allah alone. They're going to go crazy. You're you know, They're going to die. What can you do? And as such, the Prophet said, there is no obedience to the creation in what is disobedience to the Creator. Forget even your parents. Or not telling you. Or forget anyone even telling you or not telling you. Imagine people. People are not concerned. You do it or you don't do it, whatever. But you're going to stay away from certain things because you imagined people's opposition. Yeah. Nobody even told you don't do it. Legally, you're allowed to do it. <laughs> Just this is a time of imagination. <laughs> Just your imagination preventing you from doing everything, every part of the name. Just your imagination. Not even But because you live in the midst of your imagination, uh, uh, subhanallah, that your imaginary world has had <laughs> and the, uh, the real things are like a, an imagination. <laughs> subhanallah, and I see these lessons every day. I, I was walking the other day, and today, in fact, just a few hours ago, and I saw this woman who her bird escaped from its cage. And she was very sad. I was walking as I was walking around. I passed by her several times, <coughs> and she's talking to her, her bird who's sitting on a tree. I said, "What are you telling your bird?" She said, "Oh, this is my bird." He escaped yesterday from the house. And today I'm spending today just trying to get him back to come back. <coughs> and then when I went around again, then I see a big group of people that had come to <coughs> and they bring their birds and their dogs and everything. <coughs> And everybody's trying to <laughs> bring a bird from the tree. <laughs> so I said, okay, what's your deal? What, do you have any kids or you don't have any kids? She said, yes, I have two, two sons. I'm <laughs> serious. And, and I asked her, what's your love of your sons compared to the love of this bird? Do you love the bird the same? She said, of course, absolutely. <laughs> no doubt. And this man is going to help me bring back my bird. And I asked the man next to her, you also love your birds? He said, of course. She said, if, I said, if the bird goes away, will you cry? She said, of course. And the dog was playing on top of her, small a dog playing on top of her chest, and I said, would you kiss this dog? She said, yes, of course. And she kissed the dog. This is not strange. <laughs> but if I tell you that to memorize just some basic books, and that's just the end of the world. It's crazy. 
هذا الرجل من موريتانيا وخطتهم من موريتانيا بلا شك لأنه كان ثالثا ما عنده شيء يعمله ما عنده شيء seems like he only was able to do that ما عنده شيء يعمله فقير ما عنده شيء يشربه فقط خلاص ما عنده شيء ما عنده الأكل ولا الشرب يحتاج أن يحفظ شيء أخذ شيء Obviously, they didn't have food and drink and whatnot, and, and then they could memorize. Of course, they'll memorize Quran. We're busy. We have work. We have things. We have family. We have. We have free. This woman, mashallah, she is. She understands. She knows. She is a very wise woman. Is this true or is this false? This is true. This is, this is the different reactions. Seeing them next to each other is kind of funny, but that's the way that it is. So this is just to understand, to get a reality that you have ingrained. You, they, they've stripped away from your minds the deen and then they've in, inputted these ideas and these norms which are completely <laughs> If anybody passed by this woman, uh, any of you passed by this woman who has lost her bird, they, would, they wouldn't find anything strange about this. They would just say hi and keep going. <laughs> ممكن نحفظ ولو كنت عندي الوقت ممكن نحفظ ولكن ماذا نفعل الحالة هكذا والعلماء الآن قالوا ما في مشكلة وإقرأ وخلاص ودين الله يسر لكن أنا إذا قلت لكم هذه البدع سأقول كل يكون محارب وتكون مشكلة كبيرة وحرب ترجع أنا لو قلت لكم هذه الفكرة وأكررها عليكم من عشرين سنة ما زالت تحارب but still, even though I've been telling you for 20 years, this is what you need to do, this is what, how you need to memorize, and so on, still people are opposing for 20 years. People are still finding excuses and saying, even if they're agreeing, oh, if we had time, if we were in Mauritania, we need to set up the classes here differently, though it needs to be whatever, and then we give the certificate, whatever, one year maximum, two years as mashallah scholars. All the scholars studied this way. This is how it is. Right. The, those just whatever what the programs we have are enough and good and whatnot. We have to make things available for working people to study things online and. Then, mashallah, even that Jum'ah, you'll, you'll do bid'ahs and Jum'ah and make three Jum'ahs so that everybody, so anybody who's working doesn't even have to adjust their break time to uh, go to Jum'ah just so everybody can go on their convenience. And everybody is just relaxed with the Jum'ah. Right? The doctors will come the later time. Or if the taxi drivers will come before the time. Right. <laughs> And this everything just going after people's feelings and convenience and that's it, that's the deal. Right, you have to cater to the doctors because uh, they're the ones who are donating to the masjid. A man that was hired specifically for them to come uh, for the third job. And the others, whatever, before the time, after the time. These are forbidden innovations. What's the difference? How do you compare between you and Imam Malik? Tell me, and don't even compare because Imam Malik's 
it is not for this t day and age. <laughs> we have scholars for this time. Forgot about them. We take care of the wife and the children. We want to and finish and we have the blessing and the end of the seven. But it will read Imam Malik's Muwatta and all of this. But but you know, he had his time and and we have our scholars. But this is not the case. We have our scholars. But this is not the case. We have our scholars. But this is not the case. We have our scholars. But this is not the case. We have our scholars. But this is not the case. We have our scholars. But this is not the case. We have our scholars. But this is not the case. We have our scholars. But this is not the case. We have our scholars. But this is not the case. We have our scholars. But this is not the case. We have our scholars. But this is not the case. We have our scholars. But this is not the case. We have our scholars. But this is not the case. We have our scholars. But this is not the case. We have our scholars. But this is not the case. We have our scholars. But this is not the case. We have our scholars. But this is not the case. We have our scholars. Uh, was approached in uh, his class by uh, the Khalifa of the time in Mansur. So oh, Imam Malik, give me some private time to I can teach my kids. Right, the leader of the believers. I want your narration. I want my children to be proud. That pride. There are so many people who can teach them. Who can teach them? 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 Right, this is an honor that would, they would share with the Yeah, there are the Shaybani and Imam Abdullah ibn Mubarak, the Sahaba of Hanifa and Imam Shabi, they are from Amalek, there are a lot of Shaybani. That the greatest scholars, uh, they came and studied from Imam Shabi. Yeah, there are a lot of Shaybani and Amalek. That it was sufficient of an honor for those scholars, like Imam Shafi and the Shaybani and so on, that they took directly from Imam Shabi. I want my children to take the time and I don't have time, I want to take the time and I want to take the time. Right, give them a special time that they can uh, that they you can teach them one on one or individually. He said no. He said no. I'm not going to come to you to teach. Them. No, this knowledge is approached and it does not come to you. Somebody who came from Ethiopia, somebody who came from the king's palace. Ibn al Mansur and one from Habasha, peace Sitting together, they're the, in the same class. Right, it's not that I'm teaching for money. So and he had given him a gift before that. So, and, and uh, a lot of wealth, but he had it in some kind of package. He didn't even open the package. And then when uh, the uh, Mansur was leaving, uh, Imam Malik sent after him the same package. And he opened it and he saw that it was still the way that it was. So then he sent to him even more money. And he said, oh, so and so, take this from me. He said, take this away. He said, أنت تجاوز يعني خلاص لن تغيرك العوامل هذا صار في الإسلام ما كنت تخاف هنا تغير دينه فخلاص انتهى النقطة التي كنت تخاف منها أنت تجاوز قال من أرجع ما ما فهمت قال له معناها خذ المال لا تبالي أنت تجاوز نحن طلبنا منك تدريس أطفال وطلبنا منك حضور خاص وكل هذا ما وقع لا تبكر عنه الذي كنت تخاف منه أن يغير عقلك هذا ما وقع so then he said, take the wealth, don't worry uh, what you were worried about of us <laughs> pressuring you, influencing you, whatever that you <laughs> You refused everything, but take the money anyways. <laughs> don't worry about <laughs> it. And he gave him more money on top of it. And these were the people who were able to represent Islam and be uncompromising no matter who they faced and who came to them and who offered what to them. They didn't oppose the leader, they didn't say you're not Amir al-Mu'mineen and look at the person you do, what evil things you do, no. 
انا فقط هذا هو حالي انا ادرس الناس اذا ج... اذا فرضت علي فسافعل ولكن ما دام الامر This is my sage. If you're asking me, I'm saying no. But if you're forcing me, what can I do? Right, I'm not going to go against the Amir al but if you're asking me, no, that's not my, what I'm going to do. This is the honor of Islam. And this is what allowed our deen to be passed. Uh, with uh, and our past generations uh, to pass down the deen with uh, uh, that they memorized it with that trust and they passed it down with that trust in the right methodology uh, with the proper memorization and so on they safeguarded it and held it uh, and passed it, that trust on to the next generation we're almost at two hours. Uh, I, I need to be back in Brentwood an, an hour ago. Or and then now, now I need to be in the Let's do them tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow shall keep that one. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين يا رب يا رب يا رب يا رب وفقنا يا رب يا رب يا رب وفقنا فلا نعدي الى عسل انسان يا رب وفقنا فلا نعدي الى عسل انسان يا رب وفقنا فلا نعدي الى عسل انسان يا رب 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 يا